Hi everyone, I'm Annela from Ashwood Fabrics and I'm going to show you how to make some really good quality bunting in just six easy steps. It's really good to make it yourself if you know how because it can be quite pricey in the shops and I've had a lot of um, my friends getting married having babies and so baby showers, hen do's, all that kind of thing at the moment so making some bunting is really useful and it's perfect just to brighten up any space. Step one, get your materials ready. So we need to start with getting our materials together to make our pattern piece and our bunting. I've got some card to make the template with. It's much better than paper because with paper you have to pin it each time you want to make one of your bunting triangles. Whereas if you've got the card, you can literally just trace around it. Uh, you'll also need some paper scissors, a pen, pencil, ruler, some fabric scissors, some bias binding, you're going to need two and a half meters of this and that's going to be cut in half to give you two strips of one meter twenty five um, bunting. Then you need some thread that is the same colour or as close as you can get it to match and then the fabric. I've gone for a really fun vibrant Alexander Henry fabric really really love this and it actually comes in a few different colourways which is perfect because with your bunting um, you want to mix and match the colours a little bit. Step two is making your pattern piece. So making our um, bunting triangle pattern piece it's actually going to look more like a kite shape and again, that's to save some time and just make it a lot quicker. You only have to do one row of stitching then instead of two. So along the top edge of your bunting piece, it's going to be 19 and a half centimeters. That's seven and three quarter inches. And down both of these sides, it's going to be uh, 24 centimeters, which is nine and a half inches. So to make that, the easiest way to do it is start with this piece. So mark 19 and a half centimetres along. Then I would find the centre point of that. So that means you can then just draw a straight line. Which your two side points are going to go into. So those are both 24 centimetres, so 24, so I mark it to the middle point, so now we've got your basic triangle piece, so what you want to do next is cut this out, just this side. Step three, marking and cutting out your bunting pieces. So now that you've made your pattern piece, your kite shape, you need to mark that out onto the fabric. You're going to need a total of 14 of these kite shaped fabric pieces. So you want to choose how many you want to do in one colour, how many you want to do in another colour. So I've already worked mine out. You need to put the fabric the wrong side facing you. So right side facing the table. And I've marked mine out already just to save a bit of time. But I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna basically just draw around these. Now my fabric has got a print, a design that's all going down one way. So I need to make sure that my bunting piece is always facing this way. If you look closely in the fabric, there are grain lines, so they always have um, horizontal lines going across 
and vertical lines going down. So that's a good way to help you make sure your pattern piece is, is straight. So you can also use your fold line for that. So I've used the noses of my little skeletons or the eyes of my little skeletons. Just find a part on the design that you can follow it straight up so you know that it's straight. And then you're good to mark around it. Step four is sewing up your bunting triangles. So once you've got all your bunting pieces cut out, they're ready to be um, prepped to sew. So all you have to do is fold your right sides together, fold the pieces in half like that. Then you're gonna just put a few pins in to secure the two layers together. I know that I'm gonna be sewing from this direction, so I'm gonna put my pins facing that direction so that they're easy to take out as I sew. And now your piece is ready to go. So now I've threaded up my machine with the pink thread, I'm going to start sewing my bunting pieces. So you want to do it um, half a centimetre seam allowance. I found that actually that's this line on my foot, so you can just measure it out and find a guiding point. So I'm going to put that there. And then do a little back stitch before sewing. Step five, neatly finishing your bunting pieces. Now that you've sewn all your bunting triangle pieces, you need to turn those through. You might want to use something like a pencil or a biro to get that nice and neat at the end. I would avoid using your scissors so you don't go through the fabric. Step six, sewing your bunting pieces to your bias binding. So now we've got all of our bunting sewn up and pressed and turned through. I've put it into the order that I'm going to sew it. So blue, red, pink, blue, red, pink, so that I can just grab them and sew. I've got my bias binding all neatly pressed over as well and I've done the end. So that's neatly tucked inside. And I'm going to measure 25 centimeters long and just pop a pin there because that's where I'm going to start sewing. 